Hello artists! This week we're going to be doing a reading of Keith Haring, The Boy Who Kept On Drawing. This is a really awesome, inspiring book by Kay Haring, the artist's sister. On the cover here we can see Keith Haring and some of his artwork. I definitely think that you should get this book because it's really awesome and tells you a really great story about how artists create and how they get inspired to create. Keith Haring, The Boy Who Just Kept Drawing by Kay Haring, illustrated by Robert Newbecker. There was a boy named Keith. When he was little, his father taught him how to draw dogs and fish and funny things. His dad would draw a line, then Keith would draw a line. Soon, the whole page would be full. From that point on, Keith never stopped drawing. In elementary school, while taking tests, Keith doodled on the edge of his paper. When he handed in his work, his teachers would ask, why did you doodle on this important paper? Keith didn't answer. He just went back to his desk and kept on drawing. Sometimes, Keith invited his friends to draw in his backyard clubhouse. Keith made symbols and said each one represented a letter in the alphabet. His friends asked, why would you use symbols to write? Keith drew more symbols. It was his way of answering their question. He encouraged his friends to join him. As a teenager, Keith liked to draw in his bedroom with his music playing loud. He would draw on every piece of paper he could find. His mother had to yell over the music, why can't you turn that music down and go outside to ride your bike? But Keith had sold his bike to buy art supplies. So he answered, look at the cool drawings I did. And then he just kept on drawing. When Keith was in high school, he won first prize for his art. A successful couple from town offered to buy his drawing. Keith said, no, thank you. If you enjoy my art, you may hang it on your wall, no charge. Keith's sisters were shocked. Why didn't you take the money, they asked. Keith shrugged. He just wanted to keep drawing. Keith graduated from high school and went to the big city of Pittsburgh to a school that would teach him about art. There were boys on the street trying something new, breakdancing. He liked the crazy shapes of their bodies as they turned and flipped on the ground. While the music played loud, Keith started drawing wiggly lines. His teacher asked him, why are you drawing pictures that look like scrambled bodies? This is not what we told you to draw. Keith knew how to draw. He just wanted to draw in a different way. And he kept drawing. Keith moved to the huge city of New York when he was 20. So he could draw with other artists. He started to draw all over the city, on walls, on sidewalks, and on paper that he hung up on lampposts. His drawings were washed away by the rain and torn down by the street cleaners. Other artists asked Keith, why do you keep drawing in places where your pictures are erased? Keith didn't hear them. He was searching for another wall so he could keep on drawing. Keith got a job delivering packages and sometimes rode on the subway. One day, he saw a panel of black paper on a wall in the station. He rushed outside to buy chalk and came back and began to draw. The white chalk made bright, smooth lines on the black paper. Day after day, Keith filled the empty panels in the subway stations with art. Soon, people who rode the subway were looking for the white chalk drawings. Nobody knew the name of the artist, 
but his drawings were easy to recognize. People asked him, why are you drawing here? What do your pictures mean? Keith said, what do you see? You decide what they mean. Where Keith lived, there was trash on the street and people didn't always say hello to each other. One day, he and his friends cleaned up 20 bags of garbage in front of a long wall. Then Keith painted square faces with smiles and body shapes dancing upside down. The neighbors liked the drawings and stopped to say thank you. A policeman came by and lectured Keith. Why did you do this? I have to give you a ticket because you didn't get permission. Keith paid the fine and just kept drawing. Soon people wanted to see more of Keith's drawings and he was asked to display his work in an art gallery. Art was hung from the floor to the ceiling and in between Keith painted on the walls. Keith invited everyone to come and enjoy his work. All of Keith's artwork sold. The gallery owner asked him, what are you going to do with all of this money? Keith said, I read in the newspaper that there are kids who don't have enough to eat. I didn't have this money yesterday and I was happy. If I don't have it tomorrow, I will still be happy. All children need to eat. I'll send the money to them. The gallery owner gasped, why? Keith just smiled and started to draw again. New people were inviting Keith to draw in famous museums and exhibit galleries all over the world. He was proud that he had become a successful artist, but wherever he went, Keith insisted he painted a mural so everybody could enjoy his work, not just the people who had the money to buy it. During a visit to Paris, Keith painted the outside of a children's hospital, six stories high. News reporters came to take pictures and ask, why did you paint the hospital? Do you think it'll make the sick children feel better? Keith didn't have time to answer. He had to finish the painting. When the Statue of Liberty was a hundred years old, Keith drew an outline of the famous statue on a huge piece of vinyl fabric. Then he asked 900 kids to help him finish the drawing. Keith told them, draw anything, whatever you want. No one can say if it's bad or good. It is yours. When the giant painting was displayed, people were amazed to see what the kids had made. But the art critics couldn't understand why a famous artist was drawing with kids. But you know Keith, he just kept on drawing. Keith painted all over the world. He would draw on anything, anytime, anywhere. Wherever he went and whatever he did, he would not stop. He just kept drawing. Now everyone wanted to know, and together they shouted, why? Why do you draw all the time? Why do you give your artwork away? Why do you draw on buildings, on people, on clothing, on furniture, on subway walls, on cars, on skateboards, on walls that belong to no one and things to be thrown away? Why do you draw on everything? Keith stopped drawing just for a moment and answered, I draw all the time because there are many spaces to fill. I give my drawings away to help make the world a better place. I draw everywhere because everyone needs art. Then Keith turned back to the street, took a piece of chalk from his pocket, and just kept drawing.